in the name of Allah, most gracious, most compassionate. I went to the bishop and told him that I'd like to take it a step further and become a priest. After my training in Rome had finished, I returned back to the UK, was ordained a priest, and I worked as a, as a Roman Catholic priest in a parish. And that was a very privileged time too. I was working with good people. And it was a privileged occasion, you know, for people to let you into their lives when their babies were born to baptize them, to marry people, to hear their confessions, to say mass, to anoint the sick, to get a phone call in the middle of the night and be asked to go and anoint your mother who's dying. Very privileged occasion to be a priest. And so I, when I look back at my time in the church, I, I have deep gratitude to Allah Almighty. And people say to me, Brother Idris, you know, what a change in your life. You are going in this direction and then all of a sudden you change. I see no change. I look back on my life and I see a straight line. And I see, you know, when I was sitting in those lecture halls in Rome, learning about St. Thomas Aquinas and the Bible and church history, I can see now that I wasn't training to be a priest. I was training to be talking to you today as a Muslim. That I know now that it was Allah Almighty's plan from the beginning of time that I would be Muslim and I'd be sitting here today talking to you about Islam. So how, how did it happen? Why did I leave the priesthood? Not because I had any problem with the church, none at all. I was happy being a Catholic and I had no plan to leave my religion. But Allah Almighty, this is very important, God Almighty speaks to us in different ways. He wants to bring us to him. Some people he speaks to them through sport or through a beautiful sunrise or through the words of the Quran or through science. He spoke to me through my heart because as a priest, you know that priests in the church, they don't marry. And I was very lonely. I was lonely and I made a very difficult decision. I didn't want to leave the Catholic Church, but I decided I would leave my job as a priest. So I left the church, I left the, the priesthood. And leaving the priesthood is like uh, a death and a divorce and your house burning down all rolled into one. It's a big deal. So I needed something to, to cheer me up, having left the priesthood. So I decided I needed a holiday. I had no money, so I went on the internet and looked for the cheapest holiday I could find. And the cheapest holiday I could find was a holiday to Egypt. Now, I knew nothing about Egypt. Sand, camels, pyramids. Oh, and just one other problem, Muslims. I'd never met a Muslim in my life. All I knew about Muslims was what the television told me, that they chop your hands off and that they blow themselves up and that they hit ladies. So I thought to myself, oh, this is a bit dangerous. If I go on holiday to Egypt, maybe I'll be kidnapped. Maybe these Muslims will, will seize me and chop my head off. But I, in the end, I said, well, I've no money, I've no choice. So I, I went. And that week on holiday in Egypt changed my life because for the first time in my life, I, I encountered, I met Islam. The first Muslim I met in my life was not some important sheikh. My introduction to Islam was not through reading a book about Islam or watching a TV program or listening to a sermon by a, a Muslim preacher. My introduction to Islam came from a little kid in the street cleaning shoes. And I walked past him one day and he saw my white skin. This little boy, he was thin and he was wearing little plastic flip-flops on his feet. And he saw my white skin and he said to me, "Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. And he meant it. You know, he meant this little kid. He meant peace be upon you. And for the week I was in Cairo, I would walk past the boy every day near my hotel. And I learned some words in Arabic to say to him. I learned to say, Zayak, Zayak ya Habibi, Zayak ya Gamil. And he would reply to me, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah. So my introduction to Islam came from a little kid greeting me with the words, Assalamu alaikum and all praise be to Allah. So when I went home from Egypt at the end of the week, I knew nothing about Islam, but I knew that Muslims weren't what the television told me. So I went back home, I was without a job. I needed to get a job, so I got a job teaching in a school. Remember my background was in a teaching order. 
So I got a, a job in a, in a state school. I think in the US and Canada, you'd call it a public school. And this was a very naughty school. The kids in this school were very, very naughty kids. But they were also uh, Arab children. So a lot of them were Muslims. So my job was to teach the children in the school about the six major world religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Now I knew about Christianity and I knew enough about Judaism, but the other four I knew nothing about. So to teach Islam to these Muslim kids, and I was teaching them for public exams, I had to get the books out each night and, and read about Islam to teach them. And the more and more time went on, the more I read, the more I liked what I read. I liked what I was reading until it came maybe three, four months into, into this journey. And I found myself, I was mentioning the name of Prophet Muhammad, upon him be peace, and, and tears would come in my eyes when I was teaching the kids, or a lump would come in my throat, which I quickly had to disguise, because these were rough kids, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't let anything away that, with them. Ramadan came, and they approached me and they said, Sir, we've got nowhere to pray in Ramadan, and your classroom is the only room in the school with a carpet coincidence, eh? My room was the only room in the school with a carpet and a wash basin. They needed a wash basin to perform the ablution before prayer. So they said, can we use your classroom to pray? So I get this was this part of the journey. The long and the short is that during Ramadan, they prayed and I sat at the back and marked my books and prepared my lessons. But basically after a few days, began to watch them pray. And I'd look up and say, oh, they're doing this now. And now they're doing this. And, and I became fascinated and I went to the internet and without telling them, I learned off by heart the Arabic words they were saying. So at the end of Ramadan, I knew how to pray. These kids had taught me how to pray. And as well at the beginning of Ramadan, when they said, can we pray in your room? I said, yes. But also I said, in solidarity with you, I'm not a Muslim but I'll fast with you during the month of Ramadan. So at the end of that Ramadan, I'd learned how to pray and I'd fasted, not for Allah's sake, but I'd fasted to encourage the children's faith. So more and more months went by. And by this time, I knew what Muslims were like. I knew they were good people. I felt comfortable with Muslims. So I began to go to London Central Mosque to learn more about Islam for myself, not to teach, but for my own, for my own heart and my own mind. And the, the, the final one of the talks that was given by Yusuf Islam, Cat Stevens, the, the famous singer. And at the end of his talk, I, I went up to him and said, brother, what do you do to become Muslim? And he said, well, I, I said, I don't want to be Muslim, but if someone wanted to be Muslim, what would you do? He said, well, first of all, Muslims believe in one God. I said, well, I've always believed in one God. He said, and Muslims pray five times a day. I said, well, actually, I, I know how to pray in Arabic. And he gave me a very puzzled look. And he said, and Muslims fast during Ramadan. I said, well, actually, I've, I fasted in Ramadan for the whole month. And he looked me directly in the eyes. And he said to me, brother, you are Muslim already. Who are you trying to fool? And with those words, brother, you are Muslim already, who are you trying to fool? The call to prayer sounded in the mosque, Allahu Akbar, for, for Salat al-Maghrib. And everyone got up to go and pray in the prayer hall above. And, and I was like a drunken man, because I could hear in my mind, brother, who are you trying to fool? You're Muslim already. And then outside I could hear, Allahu Akbar, and we went up to the prayer hall. And the brothers prayed in the hall and, and the sisters up above in the balcony. And I sat at the back against the wall when Salat al-Maghrib began. And it was as if, it was as if angels beyond number came into the mosque. It was just the most beautiful thing when the Quran began to be recited. And I began to cry and I cried and I cried and I cried like a baby. And I knew in my heart that the whole journey of my life had led me to that moment. And when the prayer was finished, I went to Yusuf Islam. And I said, brother, I want to become Muslim. Tell me what to do. He said, say these words after me. Say, Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashahadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. 
I bear witness that there's no created being worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. And then, of course, all the brothers greeted me and it, it felt wonderful.